Good evening. Uh, tonight, I'm going to speak to the world uh, about the chiefs and the people of the Agotime traditional area in the Volta region. My name is Wisdom Elvis Atibo. I'm a native of Agotime, and I speak for the paramount chief of the area, Nanenu Akiteku Dited. Uh, many people will be wondering what is a group of Gaadangbes doing in the Volta region, which is typically an airway uh, community. Uh, I'm here to share with you uh, how our forebears journeyed right from Pony in Egypt to our present settlement in the Volta region uh, known as Agotime. Historically, our forebears are believed to have migrated from Pony in Egypt through southern Sudan. Uh, we are called the Lens or the Agotimes. We are traditionally a Gadangbe people. Uh, we traveled from the Nue clan in ancient Sudan uh, through to Ile Ife in Nigeria. From Ile Ife in Nigeria, our forefathers moved in very small boats through the Gulf of Guinea to the Republic of Ghana around 1300 to 1400 AD. Uh, we are believed to have been among the very first people that settled in the Ada, Osudoku, and Bong areas in the present Greater Accra region of Ghana. When our forebears arrived in Bong and the Ada estuaries, they found the land to be very rich in salt. And being very crafty and very smart people, uh, they concocted a story which suggests that they have a god, and this god is the one that produces the salt for the lagoon. Why do I say this? Till today, our stool, or the stool of the paramount chief, of the chiefs and people of Agotime, is called Inchirifua. And Inchirifua simply means the salt giver. For a couple of years, estimated to be almost 150 years, our forefathers exploited this mystical story by mining the, soil, the salt and asking all people who mine the salt to pay royalties to the Intrufa stool. As our forebears got richer and richer, the other communities became more aware and noticed that after all, possibly, the God that we served at the time, Colin Shifua, may not have been the true provider of the salt in the lagoon. This triggered some misunderstandings between the people. Wars were fought and our forefathers journeyed further to where the present University of Ghana Legon is. Legon, as you would know, is called Hill, or the Hill of the Lands or the Land People. Our forefathers stayed in Legon for a, for, for a while. Uh, being people who are adventurous, they journeyed further through uh, uh, the eastern, present eastern region of Ghana. Uh, and they passed through other communities such as the Manya and the Yilos or the Krobos, where they stayed briefly and journeyed through uh, to the Volta region. Uh, one thing that is significant for viewers to note is that in Ghana there are just three corners, uh, which corners simply mean an overlord uh, of, of an area. Uh, we have the, the overlord or the, the, the corner for the, 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 yellow, the yellow crobos and then the mania crobos have their corners. And the agotimes also have their corner or their overlord, which is who is called Nanenueketeku, the third who sits on the Intrifua stool. From uh, the eastern region, our forebears moved and stopped over briefly at Avatime, also in the Volta region, and journeyed further to our present abode or home, uh, which is called Agotime. When we first arrived in Agotime, or uh, when we first arrived in the area, uh, we noticed that uh, the best part of the area was uh, a river Toje, which uh, was settled uh, in between the Agu Mountains and the Adaklu Mountains. 
and we thought it wise that in order for us to to do proper irrigation to grow cotton uh, which we carried seeds from along our journey through the Sahel region uh, we decided to settle near the river so we can do irrigation in order to grow cotton so we settled first in Afegame uh, and from Afegame we spread to our present communities. Um, the chiefs and people of Agotime, uh, as I alluded to, are naturally Gaadangbe people, though we are settled in the Volta region. Uh, what are the signs and uh, uh, indications that we are Gaadangbe people? If you go to our first settlement, uh, which is called Apegame, it will surprise you to note that the culture which our forebears had is still intact and undiluted. In Afegame, for example, they still perform the typical uh, depot rites for maidens. And so in Afegame, depot uh, is still performed for young maidens as part of our uh, culture and tradition. Um, our names also uh, reflect our true identity as Ga Adangbe people. Uh, our chiefs are called the Nenes or Nene, which is uh, uh, like Togbi in, in uh, the Ewa language. And our queen mothers are called Manyas. And anyone who is familiar with the Gaadangbe people would recognize that these are true titles of kings and queens uh, within the Gaadangbe culture and tradition. Uh, not only that, um, our language reflects our identity uh, and as such in Apegame and other uh, communities of Agotime such as Kbajaho among others they still speak uh, the Ga Adangbe language and so uh, our language is a true reflection of our identity and as well as the title of, of our kings and queens and also our cultural rights such as Tipo uh, which is performed till date in uh, Afegame and other uh, communities of uh, Agotime. Uh, to also uh, draw the attention of uh, uh, viewers to our identity, uh, if you watch, uh, patient carpets are typically uh, carpets that are woven uh, in regions that have cotton. And in Egypt, where our forebears uh, migrated from, you will notice the quality of their weaving. And whilst we were in Egypt, our forebears picked these very important skills of weaving. And you will notice uh, that cotton is usually grown in Sahel regions, uh, such as Sudan, where our forebears lived, such as in Egypt, down Mali, through the northern part of Nigeria, uh, where our forefathers also journeyed. Along the, the, the route that we traveled, uh, we developed uh, the act of weaving. Uh, in, in present form, that weaving, which in Ewe, which they call Agbamevo, or the cloth that is woven in the loom, uh, this act has stayed with our forebears over time. Uh, my point of emphasis is that cotton is a critical input or the yarn is a critical input for the weaving of kente for which we the people of Agotime are noted for. Kente undoubtedly is Ghana's most identifiable symbol and two prominent communities in Ghana are noted for the weaving of kente. Uh, one is Agotime, Petua in the Volta region and the other is Bonre in Ashanti. Whilst our forebears settled in the Volta region, we fought a number of wars. We fought with the Akamus, we fought with the Ashantis, among others. During these struggles and these war times, unfortunately, great warriors as we were, some of our forebears uh, were captured into captivity. And so whilst they were in captivity, uh, they tried to make a living. Uh, in the act of making their living, uh, they resorted to their old-time trade, which is kente weaving. 
and whilst their kente weaving uh, business boomed, uh, other people also wanted to learn about the crafts. Uh, in that form of captivity, our forebears were compelled to share the knowledge or the skill of kente weaving, and so they had to instruct or they had to uh, teach the act of kente weaving uh, through the Ewe language. And so because they couldn't speak other languages too well, uh, they asked those they were instructing or teaching to open the word. Open means K, so that's an instruction. They say K means open the word and put the thread through it and T means that hit the warp so that the thread could be firmed. This is typically uh, the act of kente weaving. And so our forebears, uh, through uh, the instruction, ask that open the warp, close it, K na te. And that word uh, literally translates to modern times uh, to reflect kente. Uh, kente is uh, a word which has been in some contention uh, in the sense that other tribes believed that kente means basket but in the Ewe language kente means ke nate or open the warp and close it.